Hey YouTube, how's it going? My name's Jonathan, and in this video I got something really exciting for you. I'm going to be going over the best gaming laptops that you can get right now for under $1,000 that are going to give you the very best performance on your game libraries. Now while these obviously aren't going to give you the same value as say building your own gaming PC, and while they probably aren't going to be as portable or light as a current Ultrabook, they do attempt to straddle the gap a bit and still give you the chance to play your favourite games on the go. So with that said, let's just go ahead and jump right in with my 5th place choice, the MSI GL62 M 7Rex 1896 US. Now this is a gaming laptop that's going to afford you a decent overall mid-range gaming experience for only like eight to nine hundred dollars. While it's got a mid-tier graphics card, the Nvidia GTX 1050 Ti, and it doesn't support VR, it will play most modern titles on medium to high settings and full HD. Inside you've got an Intel i7 770HQ which is plenty fast with more than enough processing power, and you've also got 8GB of DDR4 RAM to complement it and allow you to multitask effectively. Unsurprisingly, the battery life is pretty terrible, it clocks in around 4 hours at max, so definitely steer near an outlet if you're going to be using it for a long period of time, and you do have dual hard drives inside, you've got an SSD and a mechanical HDD, but the HDD is very slow, it's only 5400 RPM, so it can feel a little bit slow depending on where you boot your programs or games from. Overall, the MSI GL62M7 Rex is not a bad computer, it's got a fast CPU and SSD, enough RAM to have an overall responsive and snappy experience, the GPU is comparatively average, but it will get you through your favourite games. Now moving right along to 4th place, I'm giving the nod to the Asus ZX53 VW AH58 15.6 inch laptop, which is actually kind of cool, if an Asus ROG laptop is just slightly out of your price range, you'll be pleased to know that this laptop delivers a lot of the same experience for a cheaper price. One of the standout features in this laptop is the M.2 SSD, which will allow you to boot into Windows in seconds, and with 512GB of storage, you've got enough room to install some of the larger games in the market, while still leaving some space to store all of your media files. With a Skylake based Intel Core i5 processor and 8GB of RAM, you'll have no issues with everyday tasks, and the graphics are delivered by the dedicated NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960M with 4GB of video memory. This isn't as powerful as the newer GTX 1060, but the card does help to bring down the price of the gaming laptop, and it can still run like games like Overwatch on ultra settings with acceptable frame rates. You also get a matte Full HD display which offers rich colours and good viewing angles for gaming and watching 1080p videos. Like the MSI laptop that I already mentioned, this laptop does have pretty subpar battery life, but again, that is to be expected, and the trackpad also doesn't deliver that great performance, but again, these are pretty minor trade-offs for a laptop of this price. You can get the Asus VX 53VW for as low as like $800 in some sites, and at that price, it offers great specs for the gamer on a budget or for someone new to the world of gaming. Coming in at third place is the Acer Aspire VX5 591G 75RM 15.6 inch laptop, which bears some similarities to Acer's top of the line Predator gaming range, but it comes at a much more affordable price. This sports a 10 series Nvidia graphics card, you've got an Nvidia GeForce GTX 1050Ti, which features 4GB of dedicated GDDR5 video memory, so it will easily run titles like Overwatch and Grand Theft Auto V. Powering the Acer Aspire VX5 is a KB Lake Intel Core i7 7700HQ processor with 16GB of DDR4 RAM, which will easily offer lag-free gaming and more than enough power for more intensive applications. The only downside of this laptop is that it features a single M.2 solid-state drive with only 256GB of storage space, and that's pretty small for a lot of gamers, as a lot of AAA gaming titles require over 50GB of space to be installed. Also, something else you should know about this laptop, and it's something you've probably already figured out from hearing the specs is that it only just barely makes that a thousand dollar cutoff price. Honestly, the retail price of this laptop is more like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars, but I have seen it as low as like nine hundred fifty dollars on Amazon. So just look around for the very best deal you can find. Now, if you are looking for a true cheaper laptop, you should definitely think about the second place choice in this video, which is the Dell Inspiron i fifty five seventy seven seventy three fifty nine BLK PUS fifteen point six inch laptop, which is an Intel Core i seven seventy seven hundred HQ processor and eight gigabyte of RAM for a price that I've seen as low as $750 or $800. Now at that price range, you might be thinking that the Dell Inspiron wouldn't get very good gaming performance at all, but Dell has included an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 graphics card as well as a 128GB SSD alongside a larger but slower 1TB HDD for storage purposes. The true trade-off of this laptop is the display, it's really really washed out depending on the angle you view the screen, and it's fair to say that the matte display, which is a 1920x1080 resolution with a 15.6 inch panel 
model is okay at best. The laptop also has really poor speaker quality, so I really wouldn't recommend playing games and listening to the audio over the speakers because it's just going to sound really, really bad. I wouldn't recommend the Dell Inspiron to anyone looking for a laptop that's going to deliver really cutting edge performance, but if you're okay with running games at more moderate settings, or if you're just looking for a laptop that can run Adobe Creative Suite as well as most day basic day to day tasks with ease, you should have no problem getting the Dell Inspiron, and again, the fact that it is as low as $800 is a really big selling point for this machine. Having said that though, the laptop that I would most recommend for anyone looking for a cheaper gaming laptop right now is the Acer Predator Helios 300 G3 571 77QK with a 15.6 inch display. Acer is widely known in the gaming world for their Predator line of gaming hardware, and in the past most Predator laptops have been priced out of the reach for a lot of different people. The Predator Helios 300 though joins the Predator range as a much more affordable solution, and while Acer's had to make a few sacrifices in order to offer its attractive price, they're actually not too too bad. One thing that you should note is that the display is dimmer than some of its counterparts, it's not going to reproduce as many colors as the higher end Predator laptops, but with that said you do get a full HD display panel which uses IPS technology for far better viewing angles and the quality really isn't terrible for gaming or for streaming media. The Predator Helios 300 is also powered by a KB Lake Intel Core i7 7700HQ processor and that's backed up by 16GB of DDR4 RAM, and something else that's really cool is that while many of its competitors offer the GTX 1050 or the GTX 1050 Ti, Acer's gone ahead and fitted the Helios 300 with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060, which offers really solid performance for AAA gaming titles and is way more suited to VR gaming than the other two entry-level NVIDIA graphics cards. The 256GB M.2 SSD offers really fast boot and game loading speeds, and although it is a little bit small for modern games, the Helios 300 also ships with the cradle for a SATA-based storage drive, so you can easily install 512GB or a 1TB SSD at home. Overall, this laptop is just a really solid choice, the tiny amount of storage space does need addressing if you do have a large game collection, but overall this is definitely my number one choice for the best gaming laptop of 2018. With that said though, let me know what your favorite gaming laptops are under $1000 in the comment section down below, let me know if you feel like I've missed any really good choices in this video, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and with that said, I will see you next time.